For people in the know, uh, scientists and those who are interested in scientific things, uh, there's three basic arguments that I lay out in the book. One of them is that if you assume, as evolution does, that the process of mitosis was a precursor to the process of meiosis in evolutionary uh, progression in history, uh, you've got to get from mitosis to meiosis. But before you even do that, meiosis requires something that mitosis does not. Mitosis is a kind of cloning. It's an exact copy. What you see is what you get. Uh, whereas meiosis is the mixing of the male and the female's chromosomes exactly halved and then crossed over, mixed together, and then brought back to the full component in the offspring. Uh, so, what do you need for the first part of that meiosis process? You need a male and a female that you've never had in uh, the process of mitosis. And there's no DNA information for male and female. And you've got to have both simultaneously compatible, same number of chromosomes and so forth. So, the gender problem is the very first of the three problems. The second one we've alluded to in that discussion uh, is this process of meiosis. You know, the um, intelligence design people talk about irreducible complexity. Uh, and what they're saying there is, if, if anything takes everything to work, then it can't work without everything being there. Well, there's a bit of that in the second argument, that it's so complex that without the male, the female, the halving of the uh, chromosomes, the crossing over, the recombination, uh, and that's just the beginning. I mean, the, the bells and whistles that go on behind the scenes are incredible. But you'd have to have all of that in the first generation away from mitosis to get to a completely different process of meiosis. My argument is slightly different from the irreducible complexity argument. What I'm saying is, it's, Mitosis is complex. Meiosis is complex, but they're different in their complexities. So it's not just that they're complex and you have to have everything at the same time. You've got to move from one unique replication process to another unique reproduction process. Uh, and so that's the second argument. And then the third argument uh, is that along the purported chain of common descent, you would have to have, for each of millions of sexually unique species, and that's how you define a species, through how it reproduces sexually. It doesn't reproduce with any other organism on the planet. So if you're going to move from one species to another, and we're not talking here about a variety coming off of one species, we're talking about a bold, brand new, unique species that cannot mate with any other species on the planet. So if you're gonna do that, you're gonna to have to have, once again, for that species, the right male, the right female, the right mating equipment, the right reproductive equipment, the right unique um, instincts to mate. And by the way, for the very first two of any species, you'd have to have geographical proximity. And they'd have to like each other in order to mate. You know, So all of those things have to happen for each of millions of sexually unique species. And if you don't do that in the first generation of, let's say, species X, you're never going to get to the second generation of species X, much less to get to some higher species Y or species Z. You've got to, to get each one under the theory of evolution, which says we're climbing higher and higher and higher by gradual processes. So those are the three basic elements to the book that I'm presenting.